Many thanks for joining us in News Now on Ivan TV. I am Margaret Opera. President Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday presided a virtual meeting of the Federal Executive Council at the Council Chambers of the Presidential Villa Abuja. The Ministries of Power, Works and Housing, Trade, Industry and Investment, Health as well as Finance made some presentations at the meeting. While most of the ministers, including Vice President Yemi Oshibadio, were physically present at the meeting, other cabinet members participated virtually from their respective offices in Abuja. President Mohamed Bawi on Wednesday asked the Senate to confirm his nominee, Mohamed Shehu, as the chairman of the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, RMFC. Bawi's request was contained in a letter from Buhari, which was read at the plenary by the Senate President Ahmad Lawan. Also on the floor of the Senate, Senators Francis Ezenwa Onyewuchi, Imo East, and Halimu Dauda Jika Bauchi Sandra defected from their political parties. Onyewuchi decamped from the People's Democratic Party to Labour Party, while Jika moved from the All Progressive Congress to the New Nigeria People's Party. Their letters of defection were read on the floor by the Senate President. The lawmakers cited the lack of transparent internal politics in their former political parties as the reason for their actions. And moving on, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Faru Gaya, has assured that the Nigerian Army will continue to strengthen its partnership with the Nigerians in securing the nation. He gave the assurance when he paid homage to the Otaru of Aochi Sacred Kingdom, His Royal Highness Alahaji Ali Rumomo, Ikelebet III, expressing appreciation to the Royal Fathers of, for his support of the Nigerian Army. General Yahya stated that the Nigerian Army will continue to leverage on partnership with critical stakeholders for the sustenance of peace and security. While welcoming the COAS to his palace, the Alaji Ali Momo assured the Chief of Army of the, his continued support of his kingdom to the Nigerian Army in pursuit of its constitutional mandate. Now, last Saturday's governorship election in Ekiti State has been a judge credible and acceptable. This was the final and joint verdict of the Coalition of Observers Group, who monitored the poll across the 16 local government areas of the state. The group in the communique issued on Tuesday in Adoikiti by its leader, Comrade Victor Kalu, commended the Independent National Electoral Commission, security agencies and other critical stakeholders for their support and neutrality during the election. In the communique read by, read by Kalu, the group appealed to Nigerians to always vote according to their conscience. The coalition, however, urged the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Shegu Oni, who had threatened lawsuits against the outcome of the People's Democratic Party candidate, B.C. Kolawole, to embrace the winner in the interest of peace and development. Meanwhile, more reactions have continued to trail the just concluded Ekiti governorship election as the SDP candidate and former governor of the state, Chief Shegoni, trade words over vote buying in the exercise. Ivan TV senior reporter Ibojay Korea reports that engineer Shegoni called on Nigerians to condemn the exercise so as to save the nation's democracy. Chief Shegoni, while condemning the alleged incidents of vote buying in the election, said those who the process may have favored will see nothing wrong with it, even when it is dangerous to the nation's democracy. He called on President Muhammad Buhari to urgently condemn the exercise and ensure that it does not repeat itself in the forthcoming Oshun state governorship election. We can't be fooled. If there are laws, the laws are to be followed and obeyed. The person who obeys the law is not a fool. And that's a point we must make. And I'm surprised that people of different cadres and calibers are hailing that election. They should ask first before they hail. Was it true they say people are hawking votes and buying in a kitty? If they are doing that, it defeats 
the essence of democracy. I expect the uh, NGOs to swoop on our show now to say, are we going to apply, have a vote buying spree or an election? They should make CPE and all of them and all uh, heads of uh, national security agencies and DINEC sign an undertaking that it will be a, a buying and selling jamboree. Reacting on the issue of vote buying a shifting of the People's Democratic Party and aspirant Kayode Adaramodu alleged that none of the parties were free from financial inducement of voters during the exercise. If you compare what we had on Saturday with other elections before Saturday, 2018-2014, uh, I'd be happy to give credit to INEC. They've made tangible, meaningful, remarkable, commendable improvements. Is there any of the parties who did not give? So maybe people, they gave according to their sizes. So for me, I won't say vote buying was what determined the outcome of Saudi's election. What we saw in Saudi, I think, is more of the reflection of the choice that the Kiti people have decided to make. The Kiti state governorship election may have come and gone. The lessons learned may not be forgotten in a hurry. I will be worried. Reporting Vibrant TV News. Away from that, Professor Patu Tommy has expressed doubt on Nigeria will make progress with its present structure of politics, pointing out that the country is in grave danger. He asked the people to stage protests similar to the orange protests carried out in Ukraine, where the citizens poured into the streets every day, carrying white and green flags and demanding that their country be given back to them. Otomi gave the advice through a virtual message at the instance of the ongoing Double Diamond Platform Global Leadership Series held in Lagos. He claimed the Nigerian state has been hijacked, re-emphasizing that there is a state capture. A lawmaker representing Isayi Sewaju Kajola Wajo Federal Constituency or your state, Honorable Shinopela has named a court as his new political party. Pella made this disclosure in a statement shared on his social media platforms where he also added that he had formally informed the leadership of the House of the Development. Last week, the federal lawmaker had renounced his membership of the All Progressive Congress. He explained that his decision was due to the undemocratic actions of some gladiators within Oyo State APC who are determined to take the youth and majorly for granted. And more stories, two bank workers have been arrested by the Oyo State Police Command alongside four others over plans of robbing a new generation bank in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital.